Finally! Hey, hey, what's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Oxtail pillow. All the thought I was backing off the oxtail because everybody and then and then have an oxtail video out there. So while them still fighting up with, with stew oxtail and oxtail with butter beans. What am I doing? Oxtail pillow. Stay tuned. You're gonna love this one, man. The only thing is low and slow. So if you're hungry, order a little pizza or something because this thing is about four hours. I like. But when you taste it, mama yo. You call in mommy and tell you, mommy, I see new champ in the kitchen. Watch thing. And that there, folks, that's what $40 of oxtail looks like in Canada. It's been washed with a juice of half a lemon and cool water, and they're big pieces. I try to make it, make them all sort of like the same size so they cook evenly. And two, you want to trim off most of the fat. So you see most of the fat around there is gone. And the reason why I paid a little bit more for this oxtail is because according to the butcher, partner, this oxtail young boy, they all on hard. I say, all right, no worries. First thing first, salt. Quite a bit of salt because remember, it's quite a bit of meat there. Plus later on, we are adding rice. If you know any more pilau, that's what we're rocking. Yeah, look who's back. That trick pepper mill and all that backside. So we're going in there with a good dose of black pepper. After that black pepper, we want a little Worcestershire. A little tomato ketchup. The acidity in that. We talk about that already, but I keep having to explain time and time to all you. An onion. I'm just chopping up some onion in there. A nice large onion. You need some scotch bonnet pepper or habanero or any sort of spicy pepper that you like. If spicy is not your thing, well obviously don't rock that. So in goes that onion in there. One whole hab. Now nah, boy, there's a scotch bonnet. You know habanero thing. That is from my garden. And I'm putting the entire thing. This will cook off, so don't worry too much. Now also, if you're worried, yo, what's going on in there, boy? Anyhow. The seeds and the white membrane surrounding the seeds, if you're worried too much about heat, don't include that, alright? gonna dump that in there a couple more things to go in there this is a seasoning pepper it's very similar to pimento pepper that I grew this year but this one is called um, roulette so it has the same sort of smell and scent and I guess smell and scent is the same thing but the properties of a scotch bonnet without any heat whatsoever it's more of a seasoning pepper I we need two heaping tablespoons of Caribbean green seasoning so it's gonna mix all that up now now I know you guys will be asking Chris can I do this in my pressure cooker yo I, I don't even own a pressure cooker to be honest with you well I do but it's it's buried somewhere I don't like that thing at all I really don't low and slow but if pressure cooker is your thing you rock pressure cooker how you see fit I'm undoing low and slow I've got my big heavy cast iron glazed Dutch oven if you want to use your Caribbean Dutch pot to rock that and to that I'm going in with a tablespoon and a half of pure organic coconut oil my heat medium high we're gonna follow that up and this is the browning process one two tablespoons of golden brown sugar now here's the thing, the reason why I'm using that coconut oil and it's that organic stuff, I'm starting with a coconut base because I want this peel out to scream coconut at you when you're eating it. This ain't no vikey vai kind of peel out. This is the real thing. Uncle Chris coming hard. And that brown sugar, once it melts, it's gonna go frothy, it's gonna go amber, and just before it goes black, that's when we're gonna add the seasoned oxtails. <laughs> You see how dark it's going now? So this is an indicator. Notice the dark spots there, that sort of amber color. We don't want it to go black. If it goes black, what's gonna happen, the entire dish will have a bitter aftertaste later on. So now, introduce the seasoned oxtail to the pot. Save the bowl that you marinated the oxtails in because we're gonna can't pick up any remaining 
seasoning from that. Give that a good stir to put the pieces of oxtail in that niceness there. That is all about flavor and color. Now what you're going to do is as soon as that comes up to a boil, you will put the lid on it, turn the heat down to low and let that gently cook there. It's going to spring up its own juices, but we're going to give it time to do its thing. It's been going now for about 15 minutes with the lid on. Notice the lovely color that we're getting there. I'm not sure how the lighting is showing it. So what we're going to do, and that is all juices that naturally sprouted up there. What we need to do is to burn off that liquid to rich in the color, because later on that will help influence the color of your pillow, plus it will intensify the flavor into the oxtails. As you can tell, well I don't know if I mentioned it already, but the lid is off, and notice how darker and more succulent this is looking. Don't get tired, this thing is really tough still. And again, it depends on the oxtail that you get as well too. I try to get that young oxtail according to the butcher. My heat is turned up. I'm trying to burn off all that liquid. As I said, we try to deepen the color and infuse the pieces of oxtail with that lovely flavor. It will take about five minutes on that high heat to burn off all that liquid. I don't know if you guys can see there on camera, but that's the oil that we started off with. And you know, that's one of the reasons why I said to trim your oxtail as much of the fat as possible because it can be very fatty and we're not trying to include that in our diet, you know what I mean? For too long Caribbean people have been eating terrible and we think we're eating good. Fresh thyme. Gotta love that fresh thyme in there. That's fresh straight out of my garden. Some scallion. Now remember we went in with Caribbean green seasoning already but I want different layers of flavor as we cook this. A carrot. And we're going to grate in some ginger. And remember that ginger is going to have a fiery note as well, a peppery note as well too. So, let's be mindful of that, yeah? And to complement that coconut oil that we started off with, coconut milk. Remember, we got to braise that oxtail now. Followed by two cups of water in the same bowl where we marinated the oxtails. Turn the heat up to high, well it should be on high because we're trying to burn off all that liquid. We're going to bring this up to a boil with the lid on and then turn the heat down to a simmer and let that go for a couple hours until the oxtails are relatively tender. Then we will add the other steps in making this best peel out here. I told all the Uncle Chris not skylocking today. It's been about five minutes since I put the lid on there. So it's come up to a rigorous boil. This is where the patience comes in. We're going to turn the heat down to low, lid back on, and let that gently cook until the oxtails are tender. It's been an hour since we added the coconut milk and water and everything else. And you notice that lovely thick, oh boy, that is just pure niceness there. So an hour later, this is what it looks like. It took on the color, it's getting nice and thick. The kitchen is going to smell simply amazing. You notice how the pieces of ox still already starting to tighten up and stuff like that. That is normal. Don't fret too much. But they're not tender yet. So we still got to go on at least another hour in my estimation. Of course, we will correct this as we go along. But that is what, where we are at right now. And remember, I had the lid on. The lid was on like that. Brought up. In total, it went for two hours, two and a half hours. I remember I told you, the butcher told me it was a soft or a young ox or whatever it is and I want you guys to see something it's falling off the bone now so we're trying to maintain the integrity of it but now the cooking time will depend on the age of your oxtail so be mindful of that now here's where things is going to start looking like an actual pillow but enhanced by Uncle Chris we've got pumpkin and if you have butternut squash, you want to use butternut squash, you use butternut squash. I might spend the big bucks and I got the imported pumpkin from the Caribbean. I ain't skylocking today. Pumpkin. Now, I know some of all you. Chris, okro boy, here now. Until you have it, don't knock it. So we go okro or okra. You know this what's going on there? This is just a pot of happiness happening here. A little bit more pumpkin. We ain't trying to waste that. I told all that I paid imported prices. Pigeon peas, straight out of a can, don't study that. 
I small thing. We are done yet. You thought we were over? You thought it was done? We've got celery and chop up nice and small. And that is something my great aunt, Tanti Blassen, look how your recipe living on, lady. All right, we ain't done yet. We need rice. We need to bring that all together. Going in with my rush, <laughs> my washed parboiled brown rice. If you use basmati, if you use whatever white rice or whatever, do your thing. I might grow up on this parboiled brown rice, yeah? Turn up the heat now to medium. Go in with hot water. You'll need about, so that's two cups of water there. Let me just hit it a stir and then we'll adjust the water, the liquid. But you notice what's going on here, eh? Hi, 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 boy. Hey, I'm telling ya, I'm really done yet, eh? There's something else to go in here, don't worry. Let's give me that a quick stir and I'm gonna put two more cups of water. So four cups of water. Remember we already have two cups of coconut milk in there and two cups of water from prior, right? As it starts coming up to a boil, some baby spinach in there and some parsley out of the garden. And we gotta continue with that herbal note thing. Later on, we're gonna taste it for salt and adjust it, but for now, we're going with a little more of that spinach now. Gosh, man. Dip that down, poke that in there, give everything a stir, bring that up to a boil, then reduce it to a rolling boil. And basically, all you're doing now waiting for the rice to fully cook now because we have that okra in there this is going to be team wet pillar which means it's going to have a, a bit of a runniness to it a bit of a, a moisture content to it if you're trying to get a grainy if you're team grainy pillow or dry pillow obviously leave out that okra but that okra will you know, it's big flavors man and we pay in tribute to we heritage and everything by using that okra in there and that pumpkin boy hmm. Different level thing Chris making for there. Bloop bloop, so we got that bubble going. Ever so often hit him a little stir just to move things. We want the pumpkin to almost melt down in there. And you can see the niceness. Now remember to adjust the water according to the rice that you're using as well. My lid is open by the way. That's what I really wanted to, to impress on you guys there. It's been going for about 25 minutes now. You can see the rice is nice and plump. What I'm going to do here is turn off, well by the way, taste it for salt and adjust it to your own liking. We've got these nice pieces of ox steel that held its shape. Pumpkin starting to melt down there. Oh boy, this is just delicious goodness here. Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com, always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Man, there's nothing more comforting than a good pillow. Look at that now, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Till we cook again. A long, you know, it was long. It was a long process getting here. We tightened it up. Now remember, some of you probably thinking, Chris, how you pale? I was so pale. We have two massive lights. One there, one there. So don't get tired. All right? Take it easy.